Hello everyone, welcome back to Talking History. My name's Liz, I hope you're all keeping well. On this channel, I do exactly as it's called, I talk all about history and we are well underway on our way to the Battle of Hastings. We are really not far, we are deeply in the Anglo-Saxon period. Last week's video was all about the first Viking King of England. No, not William the Conqueror. It's a vain fork bit. Today's video is all going to be about a very brave warrior who has been called one of the greatest Anglo-Saxon warriors next to Alfred the Great. Today's video, Edmund II, also known as Edmund Ironside. Edmund II, also known as Edmund Ironside, was born around 993 and he was the third son born to King Ethelred the Unready and his first wife Algifu. There's very little known about Edmund's childhood, although it is highly likely that he was fully aware of the Danish invasions. And it was according to historians that in the years 1010 to 1013 Edmund had fought alongside his father's army and but his whereabouts during Sylvain's fork bid um overthrowing Ethelred and gaining the English throne they're completely unknown there's just no record to say where he was in 1014, Ethelred's oldest son, Ethelstan, had died. And shortly after, his second oldest son, Edgar, had also died. This leaving Edmund as his heir alongside his younger brothers, Edward and Egbert. As well as his half-brothers, Edward, and Alfred from his father's second marriage to Emma of Normandy. In the year 1014, Edmund took a stand against his father and the Earl of Mercia, who was kind of Ethelstan's advisor, Edric Strona. Strona had betrayed Sig Sig Sigfirth, Sigfirth? a um, scene from East Anglia and Strona had lured Sigfirth and another scene named Morcar into a chamber during an assembly at Oxford and Edward had them both killed. I couldn't find why, which is really frustrated or all the research and I don't, I could not find why. King Ethelred took possession of all of their effects and he had ordered that Sigfirth's widow, Algitha or Aldgaith, to be taken to the town of Malmesbury. Edmund rescued Aldgaith from Malmesbury and he married her against his father's wishes. And then he, they married at the beginning of August in 1015. Um, between August and September, Edmund rode into the territories of Sigfirth and Morcar in the five boroughs. The five boroughs were Derby, Leicester, Lincoln, Nottingham and Stamford and Edmund seized the lands of Sigfirth and Morcar 
compelling the locals to acknowledge him as their lord. Edmund and Algaith had two sons named Edward and Edmund. Clearly the Anglo-Saxons were going through their letter E phase. And it's believed the boys were either twins or they were born very close together. If they weren't twins, Edward was born around in late 1016 and Edmund would have been born no later than 1017. Edmund Ironside had spent the rest of 1015 and 1016 trying to encourage resistance from the constant Danish onslaught. Edmund was proclaimed king following the death of his father, Ethelred the Unready, in 1016. Edmund's very short reign was spent fighting the forces of King Canute, of the Danish, contem Danish contender for the English crown. Before Canute's men could lay siege at London, Edmund had left for Wessex to raise an army and fought inconclusive battles at Pencilwood in Somerset and Shearston in Wiltshire. Edmund had managed to relieve London from invasion for a short while, although he would pay a very heavy price. Edmund's newly built army from Wessex had thwarted the second attempt of the Danes to capture London. Following the Battle of Otford in um, Seven Oaks district of Kent, the Danish force were compelled to move to Kent. Edmund's possible worst move was to join forces with the treacherous Edric Sirona. That he joined forces with Sirona in a hope that their combined forces could fend off the Danes completely. However, when it came to facing their enemies, Sirona showed the fact that he was a true coward and he left Edmund and his army to fight alone at the Battle of Ashenden on the 18th of October in 1016. It resulted in defeat for Edmund and the deaths of many England's no leading nobles. Canute had pursued Edmund to Gloucestershire, where an agreement was finally reached. A peace treaty was eventually negotiated between Edmund and Canute. England was to be divided yet again. Edmund would take Wessex, his family's home, with Canute taking the rest in particular, Northumbria. The terms of the treaty were agreed that in the death of either one, the other will inherit the remainder of the country from whoever died first. Unfortunately, on the 30th of November in 1016, Edmund Ironside died aged around 23. Edmund's course of death remains unclear. It was possible that he died from wounds that he had received fighting in battles, but a later story tells of how Edmund was killed by a sword or a spear that had been thrusted into his bowels as he visited the toilet. However, there is nothing at all that appears in any contemporary chronicles 
to support this theory is just another story. Edmund II or Edmund Ironside, named through his courageous fight back against Canute, was buried in Glastonbury Abbey. Canute had actually, I absolutely love this. And I think it, I think it shows that Canute respected the warrior that Edmund was. Canute took part in the anniversary observation of Edmund's death and he had placed a cloak adorned with peacocks on his tomb and it was believed that Canute had done this to help Edmund attain salvation as peacocks represented resurrection. According to historian M. K. Lawson, the degree at which Edmund had put up a fight against the Danish could only be matched by that of Alfred the Great, Edmund's great-great-grandfather. But what happened to Edmund's family? What happened to his children? So as soon as Canute had taken control of the whole of England, Canute had sent Edmund's infant sons to the court of the King of Sweden with instructions to have the young boys killed. Possibly because he knew that once they were old enough, they had a full legitimate claim to the throne, unlike Canute. However, understandably, murdering two young innocent boys, it didn't sit right with the King of Sweden. He was an old ally of their grandfather, Ethelred, and he had spared the children by sending them to Hungary for their safety. Canute having hearing of this, he had sent men to capture the young boys. So they were forced to flee for their lives. They then settled at the court of, forgive my pronunciations, Yaroslav, the, the, the wise king of Kiev. They um, were in Ingrigerd. <laughs> oh God, this doesn't get any better, does it? The daughter of King Olaf of Sweden was queen. In 1046, both boys, now young adults, they made their way back to Hungary where they had helped in the restoration of the exiled Ang Andrew of Hungary. Edmund had married a Hungarian princess but died around some time before 1054. Edward had married around 1043 to Agatha whose origins are completely unknown and I could not find a single thing on her. The couple had three children, Margaret, Christina, and Edgar the Ethlin. The family could have spent the rest of their whole lives in European exile. However, Edward the Confessor, who had failed to produce a legitimate heir with his wife Edith by 1054, Edward realised that he needed to secure a successor. Edward the Confessor, it's going to get really confusing because there's a lot of Edwards and a lot of Edmunds, so bear with me. He had sent an embassy to Eastern Europe to search for his brother's Edmund Ironside's children. So Edward the Confessor was the son of Ethelred and Emma of Normandy. 
Edmund Ironside was the son of Ethelred and Alfgifu. Meant Edward was Edmund's younger half brother. So Aldred, Archbishop of York, had spent several months at the court of the Holy Roman Emperor Henry the Third, in an attempt to arrange for the young Edward to go back to England. However, this was un successful uh, for arranging what they called Edward become Edward the Exile because he lived in exile. But by 1057, 40 years after he was sent into exile, Edward returned to England. But within just days after his arrival, Edward the Exile, even before he got to see his uncle, Edward the Confessor, was dead. It's unknown if Edward's death was just a cruel, sad twist of fate, or if his death was that of murder. The suspicion had fallen on a few. One of them on Edward's rival for the throne, which was Howard Godwinson. Although it was quite, it is possible unlikely as it was probably Howard Godwinson that had escorted Edward back to England. Edward's death was a harsh blow for Edward the Confessor, for his dynasty hopes. The Anglo-Saxon Chronicles mention Edward the Exile's death. Alas, this was a time and injurious for all this nation, and he ended his life so soon that he came to England to the misfortune of, his, of this miserable people. It's unknown if Edward's family had travelled with him at that time, however, they did arrive in England. They were under the protection of Edward the Confessor and they lived at court. Edgar, who was only around five, who was unlikely to inherit the throne, even if Edward the Confessor died in the near future, he was adopted by Queen Edith and she raised him and gave him an education. His sisters Margaret and Christina were probably sent to a nunnery. As for Edward's wife Agatha, I couldn't find a single thing about what had happened to her. She just disappeared from history. Edward the Confessor died in January 1066. Edgar passed over as a candidate, candidate even, in preference for the more experienced Howard Godwinson, being crowned King Howard II. However, Edgar was elected king after the Battle of Hastings, but he submitted to William the Conqueror. I hope you all enjoyed that video. I, doing the research on Edmund Ironside, I, I, I have to admit, I didn't know an awful lot about him before doing this. Obviously I heard of him, but I didn't know an awful lot about him. And when doing this, I have a new found respect for him. He, yes, he may have, um, gone up against his dad he may have gone against his wishes but he proved to be the warrior that his father wasn't and being only 23 and doing all of that at only 23 and like I said with canoe I think even canoe canoe 
I think even Canute respected him as a warrior. Well, thank you for watching this video. I hope you all enjoyed it. Please do give it a big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe as I put up a video every single week and I will be back soon with another video. Take care. Bye.